Welcome back, and today we're going to look at this little EDC fixed blade from TKL Knives. This is the Piranha. TKL Knives is owned and operated by Marine Corps Vets, and uh, him and his wife are super, super nice people, and everybody that works there are super nice people. Uh, it was a pleasure to hang out with them at Blade Show this year and last year. And the reason I'm putting this video up right now is because even though they're sold out, they are doing a pre-order because they had uh, such a big response on these for people wanting them back. So they put them on pre-order. And I'm just saying now, if you want to try to get your hands on one of these, you might want to pick one up on the pre-order because uh, they sold out really quick, they said last time. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below to this. And uh, yeah, if you want to help support the channel, you can follow that link. If not, that's fine as well. So, like I said, this is an EDC fixed blade, so it's a very small fixed blade. Um, as you can see, I still I get a three-finger grip, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So, let's check out this blade. You got a nice drop point blade, and as you can see, it's got a pretty cool looking finish on it. Uh, what that is, is a nickel boron finish. It's basically a plated finish on there that has a, a hardness of 81 HRC on the actual surface. And it gives it a very, very slick finish. Uh, I find it helps pass through materials nicer. And <laughs> you can get these in three different steels. You get an ADCR V2, which I think that's what this one is. I'm not certain on it. Uh, you can get an ABL or Nitro V. They come in at $150. And just so you have an idea of the size, it's, it's a total length of 5.75 inches. So something that's very easy to clip to the pocket, drop in the pocket, whereas a neck knife or uh, conceal inside the waistband, this thing's going to be wonderful. You know, just to make a quick cut, if you have to break down a box or something like that, or cut something out, holding it in that little pencil grip. These things are perfect for that, and that's what I use these for. Got a nice top swedge, but you still have a nice robust tip there. And uh, the stock thickness on this is coming in at 0.125. You have a two and a half inch blade and a three inch handle scale area. And like I said, get a nice little three finger, three and a half because of the way this slants back right there. This thing came with a wicked, wicked sharp edge on it. Nice little sharpening choil. And because it's such a short little grind, this is, I'm pretty sure, a flat grind. That's what it looks like through here. And it's, it's you know, it's a very short height from there to there. So it's not super thin or anything. But like I said, came with a really good edge. And uh, I'm interested to see how this thing's going to perform. Let's find out. Man, the guys over at TKL surely know how to sharpen a knife. This thing came razor, razor sharp, and I am always surprised by these little uh, fixed blades like this that are still more than capable. Um, I think they work a little bit better when you're doing cuts in hand like this. Uh, <clears throat> even though you have a really small, you know, about three finger grip for most, for people with medium sized hands, you still get almost a four finger grip because of the way the handle scales curve uh, in the back of the butt of the knife. So I found it really comfortable to do this, no problem whatsoever. And it's just slicing, amazing. Of course, it's not gonna be the thinnest grind. It's not made to be a super slicer. It's made to be a tough, little bitty backup blade, you know, something easy to conceal. And uh, here in the hammer grip, I'm able to make some fine curls. Now, of course, being it's a small handle like this, you have to grip the handle a little bit tighter to do these type of cuts but as you can see it's more than uh, easy enough to do and I, at this point I forgot I have my glove on I take it off in just a second so I can get the the real feeling of the ergos without a glove on just in case you know you, you don't have a glove to grab but there you go I swapped over without a glove to see how it felt and it was comfortable the micarta is nice and grippy the little texture they have on it helps helped me to hold on to it the scales were thick enough yeah definitely was impressed uh, i thought it did m more than adequate uh for its size and you know something in a pinch that's pretty much what you can use it for now doing these type of cuts on a flat cutting surface being that it's not you know your thinnest sliciest knife ever um it that that message was for the wood so I messed up on that sorry about that um it was okay I, I didn't have a whole lot of rope to go through uh that sharp edge was doing a good job 
it's just kind of hard to, to decide where I want to put my hand. Uh, the pencil grip like that where your index fingers on the top of the spine work just fine. Um, but you're not going to want to do this for a long period of time. And I wouldn't think this would be your first choice anyway to do that. Uh, I usually have a folder on me at all times anyway, even when I'm carrying my DC fixed blade. So, you know, if I had to do something like this, if it was just a quick cut and this was the easiest access, I would use the fixed blade. But we end up getting through 30 cuts. It didn't struggle as far as like, you know, getting through it. It was just me getting enough pressure down into the board to get through the material. So definitely uh, did its job. Here you can see that needle tip. It was really, really just ripping through there. I decided to do an extra one because it was fun to do. And that edge still feels pretty nice. Uh, he doesn't rock well on that high because his knives are purpose built knives for, you know, combat, <laughs> being that they're veterans. And that's totally fine. I'm testing it as an EDC blade, and that's fine as well, too. It can definitely handle all the stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, even when I, that, that thicker tubing right here, even though it took a little bit more pressure to get through it, it went through it fine. Because I think that that coating that they have, that hard, hard coating they have on the blades, makes the blades nice and slick. So it helps it get through material. It didn't bind up at all. But you feel that extra thickness going through this corner cardboard. But once again, it can get the job done. Uh, I, this is probably the most I would ever, I wouldn't, I wouldn't never take it this far with a small fixed blade like this. But, you know, had to cut some string off of something, had to make a quick cut. Uh, the denim, you could tell I was struggling a little bit. I could not figure out how I wanted to position my hands because you got to be careful. You don't want to grab the bottom of the blade and cut yourself. Um, so I decided just to kind of give it a light uh, downward force and just do a little sawing motion so it's not really that the knife's not sharp it's just i'm not able to put as much pressure as i would like to uh, but we end up getting through all of it <clears throat> and that's all i can really ask for something like this you know uh i enjoy carrying it um i'll probably sharpen it up once i'm done because this is one that i got at the show you know it it, it didn't i don't think it had a you know a brand new fresh edge on it but it was nice and sharp should have probably dropped it up before the testing. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed the cutting footage as much as I enjoyed making it for y'all. Um, I think I talked about it. You know, I think this knife is perfect for the quick cuts. If you do like a pinch grip like this to do some saw in motion, use that pencil grip. It works excellent. And the three, three and a half finger grip, you know, cutting through cardboard and maybe rope and stuff like that. It gets a, more, a little bit more difficult when you got to put a lot of pressure because it's a smaller knife. I don't really think it's meant for that kind of stuff. It's a good uh, quick user. Use it, put it back up, and be done with it. Uh, it's funny. I was, I was, I was wondering if I could still, if I wanted to do a reverse grip, and how this uh, angle comes up right there. I can put my my finger right there, and I can still get a lot of force down into something. You know, it's it's the the knives you don't see that are dangerous. <laughs> and yeah, this one definitely was a lot of fun to use. It's got bolt-on construction, big old chain ring bolts there. That are countersunk. I uh, forgot what he calls this little texturing on the micarta grips. You can get G10, different colors G10, layer G10, and micarta. I went with micarta because it, it's grippier for me and it's more comfortable to for my hands. Uh, it offered a good bit of grip and I never felt like the knife was going to come out of my hand, especially whenever I was holding stuff, doing you know hammer grip cuts or even putting my thumb up here. I love their sheath up, how they do their sheaths. This is a Kydex. You can get the smaller clip for like inside the uh, inside your pocket or a little bit longer one if you want to do it inside the waistband, which I know a lot of people do carry these like that. Um, you know, this one I could easily do that. If I wanted to, I could take this off and carry it as a neck knife because it's, it's a small enough knife. Uh, good retention, no rattle. And I love how they, like, instead of doing a taco sheath where you can have a thicker section right here, you got uh, your your rivets on this side for different attachments. You got your drainage hole, and they crimp this side. And I don't really know if they were going to put uh, grommets on this side or not, but um, I have another sheath from them, and it's, it's, it's just sealed right there. So they work really, really well. They hold the knife in nicely. Uh, if I don't, if I didn't have this on here, I have a little push off spot, as you can see right there. They do an excellent, excellent job with their sheath. It's not coming out. Let's get a quick weight first in grams of just a knife, 60.6 grams or 
89.6 grams or 3.160 ounces. So very, very lightweight. As a quick side reference with the SE Azula, not the Azula 2, the Azula and the Giant Mouse GMF1. It's a little bit smaller than the Azula and it's uh, bigger than the uh, GMF1. This is the only one that I have that's pretty darn similar in size is the Uinta Explorer. Uh, the Explorer is a little bit longer as you can see, not by a whole bunch, but uh, definitely had that similar feel in hand. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. Um, you know, these are just nitpicks because I enjoy the knife for what it is. You know, I understand he makes, you know, knives that are built for combat people and tactical style people. Um, and that's, that's excellent. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And they're well built for that. Uh, I, the only thing I would have loved to see on, you know, the smaller EDC size fixed blade, you know, something that is like this and you, you only have a little bitty blade. I like it to have, you know, really good edge retention and uh, the HRC on this is at 57 HRC with a dual temper deep cryo, which it, it held a good edge, but up here in the front where I used it the most, it's pretty, I can, you know, I can put my finger right there. It's not, it's not the sharpest anymore, which I could strop it back up and it'd be just fine, but it would have been awesome to see this, you know, ran at like 61, 62. You know, so you could get the edge retention out of this. This isn't, you know, a pry bar. It's, and it's not, you know, it's not a, uh, I don't know, tactical knife, I don't think. But, you know, uh, as it sits, I still love it. And I de this definitely won't be my last TKL knife on the channel. I promise you that. Um, I, like the, I like a lot of their designs. Well, there was a lot of cool stuff on the site. If y'all want to see me do more stuff from TKL, y'all let me know. Like I said, I will have a link to the pre-order down in the description if you're interested in picking one of these up. And like I said, if you're interested in one of these, I would get in on that pre-order because um, he said they sold out really fast last time. I had picked up the last one they had at Blade Show and uh, I was super excited about it. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.